Hello everybody, it's I, Anselpath here. Today is the second day with the new mic, let's go. Also, I don't have a pop filter and it was backwards yesterday, so I may be louder than yesterday. If it's too loud, just tell me, I can, I can always fix it. We're going back to kill my vocal cords today. But let me close my door first, because I actually forgot to do that. BRB. Anyways, as I said, we, we are back to do cringy voices for female characters, which I cannot do the voices for. Uh, if you missed the first stream, which was yesterday around 4 o'clock, it is uploaded onto my YouTube channel, which is down below, as well as the Discord server. So if you want to check them out, I'd be highly grateful. I had a lot of fun yesterday, but it's going to be even worse today because I can actually hear myself like I can actually like hear myself a lot more than I did yesterday and yesterday was already bad hearing myself just how are you we'll see about that anyways uh, let's let's hop into DDLC shall we that's the wrong window there it is Alright, it should be popping up any second. I say that though, it, it's, it may have already popped up for you, I don't, I don't know, the stream's delayed on my side. I, I never have any clue if it's already appeared or not. So, yeah. Anyways, I think we're on day three of this. Because I did... I went through the first day, then I wrote one poem already. Thank you, just... Warren for the follow. Thank you so much. Anyways, we're but yeah. We're on the second poem. So let's just get that. For those who weren't here yesterday. Okay. For those who were not <laughs> Poetry Arc. But for those who weren't here yesterday, we are we are going the Yuri route first. We're going for Yuri. And then it's probably just gonna skip straight to uh, Monica. Like we'll finish out the one playthrough, we'll get Yuri, probably Natsuki. And then it's uh, that's gonna be Monica. There will be two playthroughs, then who knows, maybe I'll do mods after it if I feel like it. Philosophy, definitely. Some of these are like really hard to tell, like aura. I I, I feel like that would be Yuri. I don't I don't know. Okay. Doki Doki I feel like would be Natsuki, maybe Sayori. Sayori usually has like the depressive ones, like captive or broken or shame. <laughs> Death is hers. I know that. Uh. Let's go for captive. Depression, that has to be Sayori. No way in my mind does that equal either Natsuki or Yuri. Misery is probably Sayori as well. She has a lot of the depressing ones, even though she's like the happy character. I'm gonna go for Portrait. Okay, we got that. Vertigo is definite, has to be. Okay. Uncontrollable, Flying Masker, Sparkle, Happiness, Joy, Daydream, Holiday. What is that word? Serioti? I've never heard that before. What? What? Do, what? What is that? Uh, I'm gonna try contamination. We 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 are six for six. Seven for seven, let's go. This is the best I've ever done. Oh. 
covet? Question mark. Let's go. Just, just, just pick the, uh... Just pick all of the ones that sound very, uh... I, I don't have words today, don't mind me. Uh, fancy words. Just pick all complex words that you may not know what they mean, you know? Intellectual. Let's go. Also, I don't have a pop filter, so th there may be some pops. You never know. Has to be, right? I think that's 11 for 11. Please. Damn it, Sayori. <laughs> Disown. Oh boy. Think tragedy. No? Oh, come on. Vivid, bright. Destiny, please. There we go. Heaven sent. Oh. Okay. Vivacious. Oh, come on. That has to be. Skirt, rose, and... Now, this is a hard one. I'm gonna go dark because... Because uh, Yuri has mentioned that she likes dark writing multiple times, so... Oh, come on. Siri has never mentioned the word dark. Yuri has mentioned that she likes reading darker things like 15 times already. How is it not Yuri? Okay. An ending. Alright, that's it for that. We're about it to get into those cringy voices, you know? All the cringe is about to happen, let's do it. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. We I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. What what voice? I may check that out sometime, but yeah. Okay. Thanks for the mod, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's fine. I'm small. I'm small. No one's gonna really see it except for me and you, George. By the way, I might mute my mic every so often because I have these Japanese choco and coffee biscuits right by me, and they're really good video coming about Japanese snacks hopefully soon so anyways what voice I don't remember what voice I'm just gonna go hi Enzo yo Sayori looks like you're in a good mood today <laughs> I'm just still not used to being you being in the club that's all I see that's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Sp Speaking of which... I'm kinda hungry. Of course you are. What do you mean, face reveal? Will you come with me to buy a snack? No. Hey, I called it though. No thanks. Eh. Th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? That that's a weird thing to go for. Though I wouldn't be surprised if it's something weird because they did talk about that she almost burnt down her house last time, so 
Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Okay, you have no reasoning, really? This is slandering me. Ah, uh, uh. Seriously nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Oh, she has no money, doesn't she? She has no money, that's why she wants to come. Me to come, that's why, isn't it? Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out, yep. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have had brought a snack before coming to the club room. I can read you like a book. You understand me? I can read you like a book. I don't know what you clipped, but thank you for the clip. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would have to lend you some. Oh, you clipped, you clipped the laugh? But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so, that only leaves one option. Ah. I... I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. That's right, burn in your own emotion. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yay. Tell Enzo to let me borrow some money. No. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischie mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough, Fretchy Bru. Fair enough, Fretchy Bru. <sighs> is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Uh. <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's fun... It's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think of that. You were... you were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to ex accept the revolution. The revolution? What? I would have used consequences. What? Revolu... Now I have to accept the revolution? Or does it mean like... Oh, it, it probably means the other definition, as in, like... The... Wait, no, that's resolution. I'm confused why why it's revolution. There it is. Retri retribution. That. Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. 
We're just confessing all. B but you would have come if you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Yo, if she overhears this, she will murder you alive. If Natsuki hears that, you, she will murder you alive. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> no, it's fine that you have to go. See you around, George. I, I think she got caught by Natsuki. Yeah. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Eh? Uh, a cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Uh, she just got hit with a cookie out of nowhere. I think it came from the sky and told you not from across the room where Natsuki heard you. Sayori glances around. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. <laughs> Natsuki. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Let's just think about that for the moment. She hugs the cookie. Cookie x Sayori. When's that coming? Jeez. Just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. She oh good. Oh god, that was no. <laughs> I hate myself for doing that voice line. I literally hate myself for doing that voice line. Mm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bet my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really t good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you why do you think I gave you that one? Oh, damn. Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. All right, here's another line that I'm gonna regret saying. Oh no, it's not that bad. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her. And Sayori reaches over her shoulder and seals Natsuki's cookie. Huh? I told you. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey, did you just seriously do that? <laughs> Mouthful Sayori trots away to safety. There's nowhere safe in this classroom. 
Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Huh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Uh -huh. You don't think she... Hello there. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm really sorry to say this, but I don't remember people's Discord usernames and in correlation with their Twitch. Could, could I get a Discord name so I could... Like, I know your username, but I... I know your Twitch username, and I remember you being here. But it's just been a long time, so I don't remember too much. My mind is... No. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're Levi. Sorry, I, I, I don't. I feel really bad now. I, I feel really bad. It's probably been a long time. I, I really don't. I'm so sorry. One second. Oh wait, never mind. My Discord's closed. I, I remember you from Mimi streams, but uh, I, uh, I I really don't from anywhere else. I, I remember you from there, but as well as I know a few people who say it up really late, like eggs. Sorry about that. Now I feel terrible. Oh, wait. Man, I, I'm just dumb. Sorry, my mind's in the gutter. I'm thinking about Toad Voice Vanilla from freaking Noble. <laughs> Anyways. How have you been doing then? How have, how have you been? It has been a while. She has a I wouldn't be too surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. I've been doing pretty well. Uh, I'm just on the stream grind still. Playing DDLC. I should put this in. Uh, I should put that in. Just as warning. But yeah. Let's keep going. So your Twitch is working today then? She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry. I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. 
Oh, my, my voice hasn't changed, I just have a new mic. Yeah, I got an actual standing mic, so that, that's probably why. Plus, I'm doing the voice lines as well. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Huh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. <laughs> mm. Assumptions. But... Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up, anyway? Ah. Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kinda lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, I don't... really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. And that's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better I will. Yay. That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Enzo. Monica smiles sweetly. No, that's the smile of menace. Ah. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not? Not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Save. Let's, let's get a quick save. It's good to save often. Let me take a quick drink. What do you mean by that? Things have changed. This is a horror game, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. It eventually becomes one. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet, probably reading manga back there. Hey, Yuri. Uh. Ah. I suddenly notice that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Yeah, yeah. 
I was gonna ask George if he's ever gonna stream, because I don't think he's streamed. Mimi, I know, is extremely busy with, like, her job and stuff. That's probably why she hasn't streamed. Also, maybe, like, she's grown tired of it. I don't really know. I can't speak for her. Everyone else I can't speak for as well, but, yeah, no one's really streaming anymore. I mean, Kai still streams, but... Yeah, just the reset discords also. She's had a job uh, since the summer. Since the summer started. That's like one of the reasons uh, that there were less streams. Because our schedules couldn't line up. Because I work, Blake works, Mimi works, all of us work. I don't know about Juice Citrus. Oh wait, Juice and Citrus weren't uh, in the SMB. But I don't know about George or... Grayson. I know, uh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Ah, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yeah, Juice and Citrus have their own channel, Twitch channels, but they don't really stream anymore. Or at least that I know. By the way, we're probably gonna go for around the same amount of time. Again, around two days. So, in-game. In-game two days. Just so my voice doesn't get too tired. I do have work tonight, so, yeah. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to makes her way to the closet, where she and Natsuki shall have the bravest of fistfights. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Kind of the thing. Yeah, it was definitely fun. I don't know if you ever saw it, but on my YouTube channel, uh, I did make a comments video on the Reset SMP, if you were interested in that. It was kind of talking about what I thought about it and stuff, but yeah. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay. You don't need to watch it, but it's if you want to. Because I know I didn't really share that much around, so I don't think a lot of people know about it. Okay. May I have the water pitcher? Thanks. I'll be right back. Oh, uh, this is going one of two ways, and I'm scared about one of the ways. Ah, uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Okay, it went the other way, I think. Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm? Where are you two off to? Huh? 
we're just near was gonna make some tea, so. I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. I wouldn't say 18 plus, but I'll post it again. This game does have some elements that show like suicide, self-harm, uh, abuse, or like depression, and like hints at abuse in some situations, so I will warn you about that. It is kind of a darker game, even though it looks very fun. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Oh, damn. You're fine with it? Yeah. It, it's just a warning for people that aren't okay with it. Like, if they're, like, triggered by that sort of thing, that's why it's a trigger warning, DW. But Yuri taking shots here. Monica. Please mind your own business for once. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Enzo in club activities? Uh, uh? Damn. My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Then let's go, Enzo. Ah. Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Oh boy. I don't know if it's going the way I think it's going or not anymore, actually. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri, I just... Something about the way she said that. I don't like that there's no more music. I don't like that the music's gone. It made me feel so... Irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think... You did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... It is also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Enzo. How come even when I do something bad- What's with the music? You're being nice to me. Because. Nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions, and we can't always hide them. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah, uh, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say. Uh, um. Yuri lifts her head. Enzo? I really like being friends with you. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. I do as well. I have to voice both of them, man. MC, I have to voice both you and Yuri. How do you think I feel? Anyways. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. 
Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Enzo, do you like oolong tea? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't, but sure, I'll, I'll go along with it. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. 200? I, I'm just gonna assume that's like Celsius or something. Is that, is that- I don't know what the boiling point for water is in Celsius. I, I only know it in a uh, Fahrenheit. Now, it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? I mean, I've seen playthroughs of this game because it came out way back in 2017. I've watched like Markiplier and Jack Sepsky play this. I kind of know the story at least a little. Like a lot of this in between dialogue, I don't remember. But I remember a lot of the other stuff, so. I'm not going to say anything, but stuff happens, okay? <laughs> In that case, you'll only be mo even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. One second. To my surprise, she starts hum she even starts humming to herself a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Yo. The Don Dedi is open up. Opening up, let's go. Ah. That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Enzo. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. One sec. What? One second. Where's my phone? I don't know if I'm a true teenager. I don't know my, where my phone is. One second. I need to find that. I'm blind, it was right next to me. Let's just let's just look up that word real quick. Oh. One second, someone texted me. Yeah, and it's kind of important. Endearing. Inspiring love or affection. That's what I wanted to look up. 
I didn't know what it, I, I, I wanted to have a, I want to know what it meant. Oh, see eggs. Have a good day or night. I don't know what time it is where you are. Have a good day. Thank you for wishing me a good stream. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Enzo, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. You're not eggs? Okay. I'm sorry about that. See ya. Have a good day. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry. I didn't realize. No worries. I just I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh, m my... Your posture, right? Always hunched over that like that while reading? Yes. I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. I think there's a different reason for that. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieve the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I take it, since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading posture as last time, each one holding half the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to, closer to each other. Didn't need to mention that, but okay. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Why can't you? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Okay then. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need... <laughs> uh, what have I done with my life to get to this moment? Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, uh, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. Eh? Are you sure? Well... If I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. 
No need to apologize. I'll hold the book. Oh, oh, sorry, that's her. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading it, reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case... Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. Of course it is. When haven't you fed someone chocolate? Uh, I don't know. That's completely natural. I don't know what you're talking about. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. <laughs> Yuri's expression suddenly breaks as she realizes she just took chocolate. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um... And so... S sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's... Well, y you are just helping. That's something that friends do. Right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but yeah. Totally. That's all it was. Yeah. Then. You don't need to stop or anything. Ah, uh, I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return the return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. Oh boy. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? That's a very good question that I ask myself every day. How did I find myself voicing imaginary characters playing a game that's four years old? Very good question. Anyways. Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. That's usually how breathing works. I raise my arm. Ah. Like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. That's just a weird thing to note. Damn. Damn, that was a sharp cutoff. But we're gonna going to be uh, doing poems here, so let me take like a quick five minute break because I just want to rest my voice before I go into total poem mode and have to read humongous dialogues of text. So BRB.
All right, then, we're back. Hi. Hi there. Hello. Nice to see you there. Uh, let's, let's just jump right back into the game. I don't actually know if that was five minutes or not. I, I, I just estimated. Sorry, just knocked some. I just knocked something over. All right. Okay, everyone. Ah. Uh, uh, Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. And so, can you you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Y yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. Uh, I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will ever have the courage to bring up. I mean Yuri, of course. Let's see what you've written what you've written for today. Yuri Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Enzo. This one might even be better than yesterday's. So that's the goal. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. He did a good job explaining. I really want to try and give it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid. But seeing something, someone motivated by my writing... It just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share your share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. If it's with you. Ooh, a longer one. All right. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was a symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. 
the same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pav... 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 Pavlovian conditioning? I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Hmm? Um... I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's also a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, here comes my voice dying, because her voice is what kills me the most. I think that it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in more of my usual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? But, because... They're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Enzo? Well... Yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Okay. I... I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening... There really aren't many people like you, Enzo. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing, but now, I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just, a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's, it's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. One second, ugh. Alright, throw's feeling a bit better after that. Let's go to Natsuki next, like usual. <laughs> well, I can't admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. Eh, what do you mean by that? 
poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki sh stops short all of a sudden. D don't tell me. Eh? You're not... You're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? I mean, kind of. That's that's the goal of this first playthrough. What are you ta what are you talking about? And keep your voice down. You know Yuri would love this kind of this angsty. Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean I mean ugh. Looks like I'm in trouble. Somehow I s I somehow struck a nerve, though what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. I don't even get to see her poem. Ew. I like this one, Enzo. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like the both of them. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exact- I'm not sure if that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Ah, you wanna write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh. Well... I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep that in keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little ring... Blech. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. What? And make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpected. I can't speak. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? Is it? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Enzo. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Alright, let's read this. Bottles. 
All right. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on a shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends each bottle of starlight to make amends sometimes my friends feel a certain way down comes a bottle to save the day night after night more dreams friend after friend more bottles deeper and deeper my fingers go like exploring a dark cave discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies digging and digging scraping and scraping I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I, fran I frantically pull them off from the shelf one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle, but every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. That's, that, that ended kind of dark. Holy crap. Sari, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out of good. It came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing's like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. <laughs> yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. That feels like foreshadowing. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it in no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Uh, my posture is terrible. Who should I show my poem to next? Monica, the only one left. Hi again, Enzo. One second. Excuse me. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. 
Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm? I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. <laughs> yeah, totally. I think sh I think her poems are the most... Romantic. And that's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on inside of that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in- Sorry. I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that. He must be pretty into her. Eh? You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one, anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, sine, cosine, tangent. Why, why are we doing geometry now? Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. L load save me load me oh anyone feel like this is breaking the wall a bit or is that just me hmm it's even more extract than your last one huh <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write I'm sorry if you don't like it no I never said that it's just kind of the thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of your po of the poem. One sec. Nice one. Good job. Also, thanks for the follow. That did get me, by the way. I, I should have known. I really should have known. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines, really short, makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what's what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be ab abstract as a physical expression of feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. 
Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You'll never know when you might change your mind. Wait, did she just tell me to save the game? Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this even a tip about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> and that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, I think this end day. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's, n it's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Siri has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to have a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. The cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all, it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't- you didn't already start putting up those posters, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I... I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys... No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what, a li what literature is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right, and it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all takes... And if it... And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. 
Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. A little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll have to get over with it. Get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. I guess I don't really have a choice. I mean, you always have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We are going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way! N Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. One second, I'll be right back. All right, and I'm back. Hello. All right. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more com a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her po her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. Then stands up behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. 
She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sari looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That... That was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Ah, Yuri's all fired up, all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she quiet... She quickly walks over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances around, glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It, it's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns, and, it's, and in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse of the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she, as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first one to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Siri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably won't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Even Enzo liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you re really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? 
I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little, sorry, they might need a little more force behind them, depending on, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. <laughs> don't make me go up before Enzo. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Enzo lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with the poem with what I wrote for today. I stand up and I step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudging... Begrudged... I can't read today. Begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. N this poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hm. <laughs> anyway, this poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. And that wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite the poem in front of other people? I mean... Doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. And that's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so Well, I guess in that case. You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, yeah. No problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. I'm gonna save real quick. I think this is it because it's coming up on like an hour and 50 minutes and I don't think I could make it through an entire day, an entire other day.
So, yeah. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. <laughs> I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yeah? Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Enzo. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean, Siri fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you... What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> Sorry, I, I would walk home with Yuri. Well, I would walk home with Yuri. Walking home with y Yuri, huh? Why does that- why does the thought of that make my heart pound? Oh, I didn't mean quick that. I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know. Need you? Sayori. I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in this club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I just can't lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Alright, that's it for today. It's like an hour and 52 minutes in. I had a lot of fun playing. I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching. It was it was definitely a great experience. But uh, uh, I don't think my voice can make it through another day in this game, so... I will save it for next weekend. Uh, I will not be streaming DDLC on weekdays, only weekends I believe. So Monday through Friday it will be a no stream. Thank you guys so much for watching. I, I really had a great time. I hope you did as well. Please stick around because I will be raiding someone. But please have a great day and as always. 
I shall see you whenever next time is. Peace. All right, we will be read rating a streamer called HCM. K uh, well, it's now just Katote, but please join me for the raid if you are still here. Thank you so much for watching. They're a great guy, and they are playing Pokemon.